How's it going, you guys? AZPlyo21 back again with another episode of our UFC save in WMMA5. And today we have UFC Fight Night Weidman versus Van Steenis. We are making our way towards UFC 291 Jones versus Velasquez. Three title fights on that amazing pay per view card, including John Jones and Kane Velasquez for the heavyweight championship. That's in the next episode. However, how did I end up getting the flyweight fighter? Um. I don't think I actually made him. We'll have to we'll have to do that in a little bit. But for right now, it's UFC Fight Night Weidman versus Van Steenis. I appreciate you guys as always. Uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. And also, be sure to follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Links are down in the description below. Follow the Discord as well. Link is down in the description. Let's get into this Weidman and Van Steenis. Uh, the veteran and the youngin going at it in our main event today taking place in montana the home state um i believe it's the home state of sean o'malley not 100 percent sure but it's teruto ishihara taking on shuya kamikubo uh, two japanese boys going at it in our first fight and it's ishihara getting the win here today via knockout in round number two up next it is Mike Grundy and Magomed Magomedov Gomez 46. Appreciate you, man. And uh, Tyler says Logan Paul versus Mayweather fight night prediction. Uh, I, I'd imagine it's going to be Mayweather, you know, unless Logan Paul knocks out, you know, Floyd. But I doubt that's going to happen. We'll see. Crazier things have happened. But there's, there's not going to be any official wins or losses on anyone's record anyways. Uh, Grundy and Magomedov in the featherweight division, and Magomedov improves to 22 and 2. Patty Pimblett, who just signed with the UFC, taking on Manny Bermudez in the 145 division, and Bermudez gets the submission victory over the very good prospect in Patty Pimblett. My voice might be a little messed up today because uh, I went to a soccer game last night, kind of screamed my screamed my throat out so. Herbert Burns taking on Mean Hakeem Dawodu in the 145 division. And it's Herbert Burns who gets the win in round number one. Kela Kento, how's it going, my man? Uh, she should start a 2007 save. I tried it out. The years go on. Real prospects make their debuts. Hell it up. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing something like that, but with pride from like back in 1994. So I haven't really gotten too into that. But it is kind of cool watching, you know, all the guys make their debuts or, you know, coming into the game world. I sign them, etc., etc. Uh, Mansoor Abderzakov taking on Devontae Smith. Now, this is this guy's first fight. It's second fight, apparently, here in the UFC. Has a win over Mark Madsen. And Devontae Smith gets the TKO victory in round number one, improving to 15 and 4. Excited for the pay-per-view next Saturday. I'm actually going to be live in attendance uh, it's here in Arizona, and I have tickets to it, so me and a couple friends are going, and uh, I'm very excited. Uh, hoping that uh, Adesanya comes out with the win, uh, Marvin Vittori. I mean, Adesanya is kind of annoying, too, but yeah. Vittori is just, he's, he's, he's too angry. He's so angry about everything. At least Adesanya is, like, a little fun, you know? Like, Vittori is just angry at everybody. Like, calm down, you know? Like, enjoy the moment. Like, you just seem overly angry about everything. Uh, Gordon Ryan, one of the better jujitsu practitioners in the world, was supposed to make his MMA debut pretty recently, but he pulled out, and a lot of people are speculating it's because of drug use and things like that, and I mean, I'm not going to speculate on that at all, but whatever. Uh, Corey Hendricks, 9-4, and four, taking on the BJJ practitioner, and Hendricks gets a split decision, giving Gordon Ryan his first loss of his career. He is now 5-1. and one. Carlos Felipe taking on Alexander Gladkov. Look at that beer belly. Gladkov. Very impressive record, though. 14 2 and 1. The odds on favorite against Felipe. And it is Felipe who comes out with the win, knocking out Gladkov in round number one. That Vale Tudo, uh, vale -tudo style. Alexander Melianenko, the. Is it younger? I think younger brother of Fedor. Taking on uh, Dennis Goltsov. And Dennis Goltsov gets a TKO victory. Uh, Four-fifths into round number one. Jake Hager, Jack Swagger, AEW star, taking on Tom Aspinall. Uh, you know, heavyweight prospect in real life in the UFC. But it's Jake Hager getting a unanimous decision victory over Tom Aspinall, who I believe is ranked. He's not ranked. 
but he was 3-1 and one in the UFC. Wow, okay. So Jake Hager, 41 years of age, 3-0 and oh in the UFC. Uh, is he going to be ranked? Does he just retire right now? No, he's going to keep going. All right, Jake. I mean, 41 years old, why not make a go of it? PFL would be better to do the season idea. This season of PFL has been kind of messed up with a bunch of injuries, the whole stuff that's going on with Fabricio Verdum. He just pulled out of his, you know, next fight, which I think was supposed to be Friday. I don't know. Uh, or next next week, I'm not sure. I know Clarissa Shields is making her debut soon. Uh, Sirdan Marovic taking on Jared Vandera. Uh, Vandera just got a win in the UFC, and he gets another one here over Marovic via submission. All right, charismatic talker. Loma Luke Boonmi taking on Alicia Zapatella. In the straw weight division, opening up the main card, and it's Luke Boonmi who gets a knockout in round number two. When PFL works, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is, but this the season, the season concept is a very good concept in theory. But just the the fact that the fighters have to recover, they have to train for their fights and stuff like that. Having them fight, you know, five six weeks apart in a perfect world would work out perfectly. But there's too many factors at play to make it realistically happen a hundred percent perfectly like there's always going to be some little slip up you know that happens uh oh no don't want the timer uh luke boonmi gets the win improves to 12 and 4 and wants to fight tatiana suarez next up andrea kgb lee who i just saw uh win over shevchenko uh taking on shandy aguda and it's kgb lee getting the win in a fantastic fight you love to see it and she's happy that she was the underdog apparently Andre Touchy Feely taking on a uh, recent featherweight interim champion and current uh, coach on the Ultimate Fighter, Brian T. City Ortega. If any of you guys are watching the Ultimate Fighter, let me know how that's going for you. I have not had a chance to check out the episode, and any of the episodes, I, I should say. Uh, Touchy Feely, I believe, fought for the championship recently. Yeah, two fights ago. And T. City Ortega, of course, the interim champion for a point, lost it to Rodriguez. And then lost to Zabit. And Brian T. City Ortega gets a submission victory over Andre Touchy Feely in round number one. <clears throat> Happy to get a submission victory. I'm sure he is. Shevchenko can't lose anymore. Don't lie. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about in game. I'm talking about uh, Andrea Lee getting a win over Antonina Shevchenko. Valentina's sister. In real life, Shevchenko cannot lose. In game, Valentina's having a very, very, very tough time. Megan Anderson and Reina Miura. Miura, 1 0 here in the UFC. Big win over Alexis Dufresne. And currently number eight in the division, Megan Anderson, number one in the division. She would be on a four fight winning streak should she win this one. And perhaps deserving of a title shot. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to see how other things, pl how other things play out because I know Holly Holm, uh, I believe, is next in line for a featherweight title shot. But never mind. Reina Miura gets a unanimous decision victory over Megan Anderson here today at 26 years old, already 18 and 5. That is a lot of fights to be having before you're even 30 years old. Du Ho Choi taking on Adam Boric in the featherweight division in our co-main event. Du Ho Choi, always a fun fight. Very back and forth kind of career. He's three, he's uh, three and one in his last four, and then on the other side you have Adam Boric, three and two in the UFC, coming off a win over Yusuf Rysov. And in our co-main event, Adam Boric gets a big win over the Korean Superboy. And the Korean Superboy, kind of the Korean Superman now, 31 years old, not necessarily a youngin anymore. Maybe it's just Alzheimer, my bad. That's all good, man. That's all good. Uh, and we are here at our main event. The All-American Chris Weidman taking on Costello Van Stinas in our main event. Chris Weidman, 38 years of age now, uh, in real life has that bad leg injury that he has to get over. Coming off a loss to Paulo Costa in game. On the other side, you have Costello Van Stinas, who was one win away from a title shot. Uh, ended up losing to Rafael Lovato Jr., lost to Lyoto Machida, and recently got a win over Khalid Murtazaliev. And here he is in the main event over former champion and Chris Weidman. It's number nine against number 11. It's our main event. Let's get it going. Hope you guys are having a good one. Like I said, be sure to follow me on Twitch and Twitter so you can stay tuned to all of my live streams. Not just WMMA5 videos, but... 
the NCAA 14, you know, dynasty that I've got going on. I'm going to be playing a lot more games uh, in the months to come. Appreciate you guys as always. Uh-oh. Catches. Oh, no. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner in round number one via knockout. The underdog, Costello, the Spaniard Van Stinas. Entering the top 10 without a doubt after a big knockout win over the former champion in Chris Weidman. 4,000 in attendance in Montana. I don't even think that many people live in Montana. Nonetheless, a big win in the main event for Van Stinas. And Andrea Lee and uh, Aguda can get that fight of the night. And then let's see who we're going to give out these performance bonuses to. Uh, Carlos Felipe. Let's see. Any... Anybody that deserves a little bit more? Yep, and Van Stinas. There we go. All right, nice $1 million profit on that show. We're going to update our rankings, and then we're going to see what's next to come. We know what's next to come. UFC 291, Jones versus Velasquez. Three title fights. It's going to be a big one. I'm surprised Weidman hasn't thought about retiring it because he's had a couple injuries, not just in real life, but in game as well. And he's kind of, you know, not doing as well as... He would hope that he would do. But, I mean, in real life, he's already walking on that leg. Despite the fact that he, like, shattered it in half. Alright, we are here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rankings. See what's different after those results. We have in the heavyweight division, Goldsock moving up to number 21. Light heavyweight, nothing going on. At middleweight, Van Steen is up to number 5. After that knockout, Weidman down to number 15. At welterweight, Douglas Lima is in at number 10 after we sign him from Bellator. The number 12 welterweight in the world, number 10 in our division currently. I mean, former Bellator champion, held it for a long time. This guy is going to have some tough tasks in front of him. We're going to see how Douglas Lima does in the UFC. At lightweight, Devontae Smith makes his debut. After being 6-3 in the UFC, nice little three-fight winning streak. Good. Good for Devontae. At featherweight, Ortega up to number 4. Feely down to 13. Bermudez and Boric both debuting in the rankings. I, I will look at Dylan Tuke in just a second. Bantamweight, nothing going on. Nothing at flyweight. At featherweight, Mior up to number five. And uh, Anderson still number one despite the fact that she just lost. Don't know what that's about, but well, I guess we're going to have to see. I was thinking about giving her a title shot if she won, so yikes. Uh, Andrea Lee into the top ten. <coughs> Aguda down to number 17. At straw weight, Loma Luke Boonmi, number 11. And then Zapatella all the way down to number 22. So the next time I see you guys will be for UFC 291. Jones versus Velasquez. Three title fights on that card. Holloway and Zabit unifying the featherweight title. Luque and Tyron Woodley for the welterweight title. And then John Jones and Cain Velasquez going at it for the heavyweight championship of the world. You can take a look at the prelims there if you want. After that, we got four fight cards. Shogun Uzdemir, Jakeshi McKee, Alvarez McDonald, and Gillespie Hughes. And that is leading up to UFC 292, Fajeda versus Ferguson. Three title fights on that card as well. I'm AZ Playa 21. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you at the fights.